Great pleasure to call this house to order and invite the first speaker, Prime Minister, to start this debate. community to ensure that there is a peace on the planet. Okay, so we see that how this um, territorial dispute is actually causing a lot of tension between um, India and also Pakistan. We see that ever since, um, even ever since before, there have been conflicts between pa um, um, Pakistan and India in terms of how, uh, how they help um, Bangladesh to achieve independence and also ever since World War II, we see that there have been a lot of these conflicts and we see that a concession must be made to ensure that there will, uh, there, there will be peace. We see that we need to find uh, an agreement for these two sides to ensure that um, we can, uh, as soon as possible, at, at the shortest time possible, to ensure that the, the rights of people in Kashmir will be taken care of. So we see that right now in Kashmir, it, it, uh, military atroc uh, atrocities have, has occurred before. So we see that it's time for India to find a moral uh, moral, moral stance to uh, to resolve this issue. So we see that to to, to remove this kind of conflict in peace, we need to uh, we need to renounce this. Uh, we need to ensure. Uh, uh, we, we believe that India should renounce the claim of Kashmir. So we see that. Um, how um, we should encourage these two countries to reach a consensus. We must encourage. Uh, we must ensure that India actually renounces this kind of claim to ensure that uh, a decision can be made. For example, we can. Education, man. Sit down, sir. We, we can. Uh, we should uh, actually ensure that um, how um, we should encourage to uh, Kashmir to to, uh, to find a, a proper ground of Kashmir to, to be in, which encourages people uh, to organize, um, say, a referendum or any other um, a more peaceful way in, to to. To, to solve this conflict. So we see that, what, what, how do we characterize uh, renounce? We see, uh, we characterize renounce as we stop and end this kind of forceful claim by using um, government resources. So when we uh, stop this kind of forceful claim, we, we encourage a peaceful decision to be made and we, we see that there should be other revenue uh, avenues to be explored in, uh, to solve this conflict. So what, what we propose would be, uh, we see that there are other peaceful ways to resolve this conflict, for example, by referendums, by plebiscites and so and whatnot. We see this kind, this kind of, um, this kinds of um, um, decisions will be far better uh, compared to this kind of forceful renown, uh, uh, forceful claim on on this this uh, on on these part, uh, on on cash flow. You see that how it creates tension between two countries. This is really bad for the international community. Yes, sir. Why should India renounce its claims when it has historical rights over the place? And as you said, there are other okay, avenues to solve the tension. I, I, Okay, there are other avenues to solve this uh, to solve this tension. However, we must respect that the people in Kashmir they have a bigger decision to to make compared to India. These people they have cultural ties to this place, so we see that the the the, uh, the weight of this decision should fall on the people of Kashmir itself. On how we should not interfere with these people's um. Uh, these people's rights to uh, their own decision, which ensure that these people they they they, they can self actualize that way, they can decide what they really want for their own future. Because essentially, that's their their future, that's their life that they got, uh, they are going to live at for 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 uh, as long as they live. So we see that th these people should decide whether they should uh, they want to go to India or Pakistan. So we see that referendums and plebiscites it, it will be the best peaceful way to to ins uh, to solve this conflict. Why, no, sit down. So I'll tell you why it is important to renounce this claim and what change would actually occur if we if we uh, if we encourage uh, if India renounce this claim. So we see that by uh, it is really really important because we need to ensure that this issue is resolved peacefully. We uh, but if we we can actually ensure that these people of Kashmir they will have closure. We, uh, we, we remove that kind of friction between these two countries. Uh, uh, when we remove this kind of friction, we see that further econo economic and also uh, foreign policy will be improved. How we, uh, we improve the ties between these two countries. Trades can occur. Economy can bloom between these two countries. And we see that by resolving this, uh, these, this, uh, these conflicts peacefully, uh, the, uh, we improve diplomatic ties and we see that it's still possible with these two countries Countries to be better, to be good neighbors that can help each other out if they if they reach this decision uh, this decision peacefully. So on the second hand, 
on uh, what change we actually see. We see that it can actually save government government resources on both sides of the country, uh, for both India and also Pakistan, on how we can ensure these these two countries they can uh, they can move on. The people in Kashmir they can move on. They they have proper closure. They can de develop the parts of the countries that really need development. They don't they do not need to invest in in. Uh, emotionally, uh, financially, uh, and uh, and whatnot in all, all these countries, because essentially when we see that there there's no um, guarantee to who who this this place actually uh, belongs to, we see that the best possible way to solve this conflict quickly and as peaceful as possible would be through the referendum. And secondly, I would like to talk about how um, it, it is important to respect the self determination of the people of Kashmir on how we should actually uh, give these people the uh, the choice to. Uh, to make and and how essentially this uh, this place right the people uh, the rights of these people are not properly taken care of because uh, what the government really wants uh, what both sides of uh, this country really wants is just that land and and, and while while they are still fighting for those the, those land we see that these rights of the people are not properly taken care of because no government will want to invest um, their money on, on places that uh, there is no uh, proper proper guarantee of, for for them so we say that. Uh, how these plebiscites will actually help these people because you, uh, we allow them to de determine their own fate and we allow these people to um, no, sit down. Allow these people to, to see what they, uh, to to, de uh, to determine where they should go because these people they are in the best position to make this decision because they actually live in Kashmir and they, they know uh, they know what is best for them. So uh, 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 there's this. It, even in it, it, as of the status quo, we see that in the case of RBA, where where there are different groups of people, uh, Dinkango and um, um, Masurini, we see that these two people, these two uh, these groups of people, they actually. Uh, what what is happening in RBA now is that this uh, the the government is <coughs> they, they allow these people to uh, to to decide where they want to go through through the referendum. We see that this is essentially good because it actually solves a lot of conflict. We see that how this is actually good because. Um, these people, they have cultural ties to, 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 to their own land. So we need to respect this kind of cultural ties, their, their living needs and, and whatnot. So we have to respect that you cannot displace these people because their livelihood depends on, on, on that place they have been uh, living uh, and they, they need to be, uh, they, we need to respect that they, 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 they should choose the government that's, uh, that suits them the best. So how, what, we have, what, 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 what is essentially important is that we solve this conflict peacefully, peacefully through, through referendum by ensuring, uh, for this referendum to actually occur, we need to ensure that India renounce this kind of forceful thing, whereby uh, we will allow other peace, more peaceful avenues to be explored to ensure that Kash the people of Kashmir deserve what they really should get. With this, we are proud of both. Yeah. Right, we thank the speaker for her speech. We now invite the first speaker for opposition, the leader for opposition. Yeah. 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 Speaker, the stance on the opposition side is very clear. We believe that India should not renounce its claims on Kashmir because India has rights to claim for it and has had historical facts to prove that it essentially has rights to prove that it belongs to them, right? Essentially, one of the major things that we need to understand is India is, cla is claiming over Kashmir because it has cultural, uh, it has citizens of Indian descent over there. It has invested so much in this stuff. All this stuff that I'll talk about, Pakistan is majorly claiming over Kashmir simply because India helped Bangladesh win the war. And China is claiming because they want the resources. What am I going to talk to you today? I'm going to talk to you about how it is essentially India's right to to uh, seek the claim over Kashmir. Secondly, I'm going to talk about why India should not renounce their claim on Kashmir due to the fact that they have invested so much in the infrastructure over there. Thirdly, I'm going to talk to you about how renouncing their claim could essentially 
could essentially trigger a societal backlash within India. And fourthly, I'm going to talk to you about why there needs to be a balance of interest in this particular situation. But before that, three rebuttals. Now they came up here and spoke about how we need to, we need India to renounce their, their claim because we need to promote peace. Now we, we need to understand that there has been a clash between the India and Pakistanis, and we need to understand they have already established the fact that there are a lot of other avenues to solve these problems. And we think that India renouncing its claims should not be one of the avenues. Why? Because India has right to uh, to claim over the place, something that I'll speak about in my point later. Secondly, they came up and talked about people's choice. But it's essentially like saying that if I have a child and someone else just decides to come and claim over my child, and I should then leave the decision up to my child as to whether he wants to be their kid or my kid. This is a, a logical uh, fallacy that is coming out of the government side because yeah. ultimately we believe referendums will not apply in this situation because when you talk about countries like China and Pakistan, they are willing to, they, their bigger picture is the resources over there and they are willing to spend millions to pay these people to then vote for them. And things like this should not come into the context because when you look at a historical perspective, India has significant amount of influence and rights to seek claim over Kashmir. Thirdly, they came and talk about how we how this situation needs to happen because we need to save resources. Now, I got two questions. Uh, I will rebut this on two different levels. Number one, it is to say that just because you want to save resources, you don't want to seek claim over a land that was essentially yours. We think that this is undermining the value of Indian population that exists in Kashmir. And secondly, even if we assume, even if we buy that argument about resources, India essentially will lose resource if they renounce their claim because they are all rich there, Mr. Speaker. Now I'll move on to my argument. Four arguments. Number one, uh, why it's legally to a certain extent India's. Because during the day when India and Pakistan were together as, uh, as, as one country, when they were on the verge of being split up, the king at that point of time when he died, he passed India or he passed Kashmir over to India. It was a mistake by the British in stating their documents, they didn't put it clearly and it mistakenly put Pakistan into pull Pakistan into the picture. So that is one of the major claims. And it is important to defend what is ultimately India. Because we believe that if India was, uh, if Kashmir was significantly under, in, uh, what given to India, then we think that India has the absolute moral need to defend whatever is there, something that I'll talk about in my further point. Secondly, also on the idea of infrastructure. Now, if we look at Kashmir as a whole, there have been there has been a lot of conflicts happening over there. But ultimately, a lot, a large junk of the infrastructure that has been built for people over there has been coming from Indian government, right? We have invested in the Indian government has invested significant amount of money over there to cater. Why? Why do we, why do they invest significant amount of money? Because first, there are people of Indian descent over there, rel Indian people with relatives that stay in Kashmir. So this is one of the reasons why they go on to invest in those places. And we think that it will be a bit unlogical for them to simply pull out when the fact that is that they have spent so much of uh, money in that place in the first place. Thirdly, we also think that there's this idea of societal backlash. Now when we talk about a country and its its uh, its power right is derived from the fact that the country has ability to show what it is what belongs to it and what does not belong to it in terms of Kashmir if India really believes that it is it has legal rights to claim over it then it should claim because it sh it could trigger societal backlash in the form of in terms of the Indian population will not like it number one because even in Kashmir there is a huge amount of Indian population over there so to essentially pull out will send a message to the public in India that we are based out on these people who are hoping on us to continuously fight for them and make Kashmir <coughs> India's. We think that is one of the major problems, uh, uh, one of the major problems that we could face. Secondly, we also need to cater for these Indians in that, all, that are in Kashmir. It is yeah. a bit unfair just because the places were split and just because a lot of people are seeking claims over it, it is a bit unfair for you to just let go, you know what, we don't want war, so we are fine, you just go, you just go under them. It is something that we should not do, especially to Indian citizens who are in Kashmir. And thirdly, it hurts the legitimacy of the country as a whole. It looks that in just because India is not wanting conflict, it is willing to give up its rights on Kashmir. Yes. You've talked about everything and everyone but Kashmir. Tell us why, if, if uh, Kashmiri people want autonomy and sovereignty, why can't they get it? Because the Indian, the, because the the India country has rights historically over that place and there are people in that place that want to be part of India and we think it is a bit unfair to hurt these minorities. Yes, what if 
What if a small group of minorities still wants to be under India? And we think we still need to respect their decisions as well. Their opinions do matter, and that is one of the major reasons why we think India should stay. And But also, fourthly, there is this idea of balance of interest. Because India has oil rigs over there, and we all know the reason why China wants to come into the picture is because they want to, to, to take the resources out of the region. And we think that if India pulls out of it, there will be a shift in balance. Number one, Pulling out of Kashmir could hurt India economically because of the oil rigs and the resources that come from Kashmir boosts India's economy to a certain extent. And we think that pulling out of it could hurt India economically. But secondly also, it would allow the other states like Pakistan to capitalize on this infrastructure that India has built over the years in terms of the oil rigs, in terms of the basic infrastructure. It would allow Pakistan, countries like Pakistan and China who naturally want control over that place to then take over. And we think that is naturally unfair. So what has opening government, what has opening opposition brought to you today? We have spoke to you about why it's, to a certain extent it's like legally India's rights to seek claim on it. We have spoken to you about why India has invested so much in it and why that should be a reason as to why India should not renounce its claims. And thirdly, we have spoken to you how it could trigger societal backlash. And fourthly, we have proven to you why there is a balance of interest that needs to be maintained. With that, we are very, very proud to oppose. Thank you. Right, we thank the speaker for his speech. We now invite the second speaker from the opening government team, the Deputy Prime Minister. address in this debate. Firstly, why something that occurs in the past has less bearing on the decision that we make today. Second, whether the resources are justifiably spent. Third, where does the interest of in India lie? And lastly, on why is our policy better? Why is self-determination better for Kashmir? We're going to the first issue on why something that occurs in the past has less bearing on what on the, the decisions that we make today. Because we tell you that over the past, although some, some we cannot deny that some certain uh, certain historical uh, events have occurred in the past, and there are a lot of things that there are a lot of claims that India can make over Kashmir. But at the end of the day, the calculus has changed over the years. There have been three wars between India and Pakistan on claiming Kashmir, and we think that this has changed the the calculus and the the. Um, the fr how fragile the situation is because we tell you that once uh, we once we uh, were looking at uh, a situation right now, Charlene told you that peace is the most important goal at the end of the day. Why? Because we tell you that when when peace is with, is achieved and when unresolved issues or deadlocks are actually resolved. Um, we, uh, both parties or all parties in the issue will be will will benefit from this because there are certain um, certain um, benefits that they can reap from diplom diplomatic ties or from the the uh, the determination of Kashmir as a as a country of, on its own or who uh, owns the territory and these kind of things will eventually bring to more benefits to all parties in 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 the situation. I'll elaborate more on this. Uh, a bit later. So um, the, the only harm they said they they presumed that will happen under our paradigm was this: the countries that are richer will uh, will want to pay the citizens to vote for them in the referendum. Firstly, we don't think that this will really happen because regulations can be can be done can uh, to deter this. And we say that secondly, when people want to determine determine where what. Um, what is the status of their future? We don't think that money is the first thing that they take into consideration. We don't think that the people of Kashmir will want to identify with a country, uh, identify as a citizen of a country that they do not, uh, can, they cannot relate to culturally, or they do not, they, they don't have family members, or they will have a lot of other uh, things that they will want to factor in in making this decision. We don't think that this um, harm that side opposition thinks will happen will actually occur under uh, when when we when we. Uh, hold a referendum. But on the, the idea that they said that resources are justifiably spent because there are certain people, there are certain citizens of India, in, um, the people of India and Kashmir which we need to protect. But we, we think that at the end of the day, there must be a cost-benefit analysis of what is the what is the benefit of actually um, spending your money, your budget in, into this, resolving this issue which is continuously going on. And we don't think that it will lead anywhere if no one wants to make a, make a move and uh, want to give in and uh, give us certain rights to 
to ensure better future. So we think that this has, has been, uh, the, at the end of the day, when we talk about resources, we think that the government of India has uh, lost more than what they spent, and we, they, we think that they, uh, they should stop, uh, stop uh, channeling their resources in uh, re reclaiming uh, Kashmir as theirs. Right. So where does the interest of India lie? We tell you when peace settlements happen, when, when a peaceful settlement happens, even if they have to give up Kashmir, if they have, if they, uh, uh, the, there are two scenarios, right? Whether they get Kashmir or they don't get Kashmir, and Kashmir um, self-determines themselves as, uh, as a country of its own, uh, with their own sovereign borders, or uh, whatever the referendum result would be. Right. But we think that uh, the trade-off is this. Peace versus historical rights that they want to claim. We think that the investment that they invested in Kashmir has already um, uh, the the efforts of the India has made to actually reclaim or um, to claim Kashmir as theirs has already exceeded the investment that they made. And uh, if this goes on, we think that it will cost more and more. We don't think that the investment is something we should take into consideration. But at the end of the day, when we talk, the, the second thing that they talked about was uh, their citizens in Kashmir that India has to protect and has to fight for so that Kashmir can be uh, re-annexed into India. But we don't think that this is the case. When we give self-determination uh, rights to them, at the end of the day, these people will still be protected because their rights will still be... Um, they, they will still have a right to vote and they will still have this um, this room for them to um, to have a say about their future. And the government of India is not necessarily violating any of their rights as a citizen if they were citizens before. A big one. Uh, what about the people in case of a referendum and there are people who choose to be part of India, what about these people then? We think that minorities. When we talk about international relations, that is the uh, balance that we have to make because there will be people, there will always be people who lose out and people who gain. And we think that this is uh, this is what what we can debate on is whether or not this is the best decision to make at the end of the day. Why is our policy better? Because we think self determination ensures a few things: it ensures that the policy is resolved, it ensures that long term decisions can be made for the state of Kashmir, for the future of Kashmir. We tell we tell you that if India continues to to um, assert this claim on Kashmir, what will happen? It will just be a continuous form of deadlock, and there will be no form of um, there will be, there will be no party in the in the uh, in this conflict wanting to resolve the issue, and this is particularly harmful. We tell you that once the issue is resolved, everyone can forget about what happened in Kashmir, in, in the conflicts that happened in the past, and they can start moving forward and starting to form diplomatic ties, starting to uh, um, start uh, engaging in trade and other form of uh, international relations. We think that this is better for everyone in, the, in, in, the, in this conflict. So I'm going to extend what Shari told you by, by talking about this. How we open doors, if, we don't, if they don't re renounce their claim on Kashmir, it's going to open doors for other conflicts in the future to happen. Because without a proper resolution, there are a few scenarios that can happen. Because in the past, we tell you that there are a few wars which already broke out and already happened uh, one after another. And a lot of casualties have, have, been, uh, have happened in, in these wars. And a lot of people have died in the process. A lot of money has been spent in the process. We think that there's a high likeliness for another war to happen if another conflict with Pakistan happens in the future. Why? Because there, because uh, like the history of India and Pakistan is a very delicate one, right? Because uh, there were a lot of uh, ways where there was a war. Uh, there was a war between India and Pakistan that happened after the World War Two, which got international attention. Because a lot of people, um, because India had entered the war and with Pakistan and. Um, this uh, this this conflict between us shows that the the relationship between us is very delicate. So uh, we think that there are other potential conflicts that will happen when a, when a territory is not determined as um, as not it's not determined as being uh, as uh, as who it belongs to or whether there's a self sovereign country. Because uh, at, at the end of the day, twenty years down the line, people individual will start. Uh, there 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 are, there are uh, probabilities that individual will take up. Um, Take up small scale, uh, like they they will want to resort to self self initiated actions to actually reclaim the land, such as what happened in Lahai Datu when the Sulu Sultanate, um, in, uh, the the people of Sulu, they claimed that the, the land was theirs. We think that the issue must be resolved now and must be resolved with the with the most um, cortaceous uh, manner. And we think that what Sharding told you in this debate was very important. We told you that peace was what is uh, most important for this debate. The best interest of uh, India and all, all other parties in this debate is protected. Under the uh, under side of OG, where we tell you that uh, a referendum must be held, the side is the way to go, we propose. Righty. Thank you very much for that speech. We now invite the second speaker of the opening opposition team, Deputy Deputy Chair. Yeah.
So we believe that this is uh, this is extremely inconvenient for the opening government to believe that peace is uh, ultimately going to come through the element of a referendum and that everything is going to be solved through their, the minority rights being acknowledged. We believe this is extremely delusional for a number of reasons, which we will state to you later. Now, first of all, uh, the substantives I'm going to bring about are the first that uh, any any retraction of a claim towards India is a threat to India's national security. Secondly, there is an international uh, impact. Well, there is an impact on the international community in terms of the drug problem. And uh, and uh, those two are my substantives. Before I actually get into that, there are a number of rebuttals that I want to get in. Now, first of all, uh, they seem to believe that... Okay, now first of all, they, they, they've, they've brought out the point that things that happened in the past should not be character to the fact that conflicts are going on right now, and at the moment, etc., lives are being lost, people, harms are being committed, etc., etc. But the bottom line we'd like to bring out here is that when you're arguing about the geographical borders of a country, that, 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 that conflict is about to go on for very long, because the argument is essentially about the resources within those geographical borders, which each country is not willing to split up. Now, first of all, let me give an example of Israel and Palestine. At the moment, they're, 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 they're going amok about the fact that they don't know which part is Israel, which part is Palestine, and one is obviously taking over the other. Now, we've already showed to you in uh, the substantives work by uh, my, my, my partner that the the, the, the situation is delicate because of the uh, tri-state light situation over over Kashmir. There is a there is a there is a balance of interest between uh, currently between India, Pakistan, and China in order to keep things at a stable region. Because we believe at the moment under the constitutional theory that. Uh, Kashmir does not have the the, 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 the the legal precedence to be able to become a country, nor the economic precedence to do so. Now, secondly, self-determination is not going to be a right given to any minority just because he wants to get independence. Any example of that, Catalonia and Spain is always going to be kept at a at a uh, an yeah, arms yeah. behest because of the fact that the state government, the federal government, will not allow for a referendum to even be recognized. And that is the prerogative of the federal government because of the fact that it is definitely Indian territory. Now, we've established to you earlier, it is Indian territory. It will always be Indian territory. It is legally ours. There is no changing that. We've already invested infrastructure into it. There are a stable number of populations that we are supposed to be protecting. Uh -huh. The fact that their economy, their basic economy, is actually being, their social security patterns in Jammu and Kashmir are being sustained by the Indian government and none, not a single cent is being spent by Pakistan and China it just goes to show that if India were to even retract its claims, there will be people that are going to be, uh, that will be suffering from an obvious power vacuum. Go ahead. How can history, uh, history, historical right trump over self determination of the of these people? Because these people, uh, the future of these people are at stake essentially, not um, not historical right. Here's here, let me give you a little example. The British. Uh, fought for the Falkland Islands for a very long time because they had colonized the entire situation. They they stated that it was British land and they were going to go and protect it as much as they wanted. All right, because they recognized the fact that it that, that 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 it was theirs, and even though lives were lost, they still were willing to maintain the sovereignty of that land. We believe that India has the relevant right to do so. Yeah, yeah. Secondly. The, 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 the idea that a simple generational challenge, sorry, the, the, a shift in, as, in, 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 in viewpoints of a, of, of a new generation just because the past, or the past should not determine the current generation is actually futile, because, well, actually is nonsensical because the fact that there are already extremist factions within the Pakistani-controlled Kashmiri population that are opposing national security threat, yeah. which I'll be talking about a little later. I mean, these people are already catering to the menaces of society that are affecting most of Southeast Asia. Asia anyway, but before I get into that, you also believe that uh, India has lost resources. Well, guess what? We've stated, stated earlier that if we have potential resource factors, we have. The fact is, Kashmir is is, is so beautiful that everyone is, is is ready to go to war for it. India has shot Bollywood films there, which is their major source of income. They have oil rigs. They have so many things to capitalize from. They will not let it go. And just because a dissenting minority who obviously do not have this not the economic or the political prowess to take care of themselves on the constitutional record, the, the constitutional theory of recognizing what is a country. 
India shouldn't, if they choose to follow the fringes for not consort, uh, conforming to the majority, then so be it. The bottom line is the majority feels, the majority of the Indian population feels that Kashmir is theirs and we're going to keep to the public mandate of India. Lastly, the efficacy of referendums in the first place, because they, they believe that referendums and plebiscites are going to be the big magic wand that's pretty much going to solve everything. We believe this is out of bullshit because of the fact that we've seen Somaliland and Somalia and the fact that in 1925 when the Somaliland people actually came up with a referendum, even the United Nations were, able, were not able to recognize it because of the sheer fact that referendums cannot be conducted holistically because of the lack of a census. And if Jammu and Kashmir is such a much such a, a mountainous region that even an, effic an, an efficient census cannot be cannot be conducted, then what so is a referendum? And obviously you do not understand Desi politics when you don't realize the fact that the influencing factors of power, of power within the region, such as the Pakistanis and the Indians, not willing to not just use bribery in order to consort uh, votes towards referendums, but intimidation as well, which is Indian politics and Pakistani politics 101, is your, your idea of being delusional of what the reality of the ground might be. First of all, uh, now I shall move into my substantives, that which is the national security of India. Now, first of all, there is already a number of terrorist factions that are actually being uh, created within the India, within the Kashmiri region. Some of them are even responsible for the Mumbai Taj bombings that that had happened, and you can actually trace them to Kashmiri territory. And secondly, the, a lot of the, uh, the, the, the a lot of the, the, the general population that actually want independence, so to speak, are actually trying to retaliate towards Indian land. Claiming, but, but, and, and the, the fact of the matter is they're extremists because they're willing to, to, to go towards the, the most extreme forms of, of, of dissent to be able to prove a point. Bottom line is they can't come to the table and play fair. We're not going to let you go for it. Secondly, there is an international impact towards the Kashmiri situation. Now, obviously, if you studied your map, Kashmir is actually on the opium route trade and is also one of the places where you actually, uh, is, is actually physically located on a, a critical area where drugs are being actually trafficked throughout the Southeast Asian region. Now, India is already taking its efforts to the extreme to be able to police the situation. If India loses any form of control, it loses traction on the fight against drugs, which in turn, in turn affects the international community. Do we want a, pol a politically and economically defunct people with no sense of rationality and the only thing they want is independence because it's something being fed to them by an opposing country who is willing to take their resources from underneath them? I don't think so. The bottom line is we oppose. We yeah, yeah. Right, thank you very much. We now move to the closing half of the debates in my first speaker, closing government. <coughs> Child can't choose because of who their who his parents is because of DNA, and they use the same like circular line of reasoning to explain why India should not renounce because it's India's territory, therefore they should not renounce it. I'll explain to you why, even all their reasons that they've given us to explain why India's uh, Kashmir is India's territory is not applicable, and why, uh, even uh, even though OG did not fill the gaps. If you pass a res referendum, there will be an overwhelming majority that will agree that Kashmir should be in a sovereign state of its own, and therefore, like that's the assumption that you know CG is going to run with, uh, run its arguments on. Let's look at what they've given us as uh, reasons for why India, if Kashmir is India's. Firstly, they told us it, India is technically legally theirs because of sorry. Kashmir is legally theirs because of historical reasons. We don't agree with this like colonialistic rhetoric, especially when it comes to seeing how uh, countries can even like uh, attain autonomy post historical events. And we don't believe that this is the one reason or the one main factor why it should even be considered uh, 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 should be considered uh, in assessing Kashmir's uh, as. Uh, 
sovereignty. Why is this so? This is because we recognize that Kashmir, even though it may be, it, India claims it is a limb of India, it is a defective limb and it has been diverging away from India. Yeah, yeah. The people, the culture in Kashmir itself has been independent of India, has been growing independently from India itself. And we don't believe that historical reasons should pin two people who are completely opposite to uh, one like one singular yeah, yeah. constitution. Second, they told us like that, that India invested infrastructure. It's a completely childish reason to use to say that like because you've in invested infrastructure, you ha you are mine now. Because there's a simple solution to that, right? You can always have like offer Kashmir a form of loan or like Kashmir can always pay it back in, in return. But more than that, we don't believe that this uh, fundamental reason that you should use to like deny a birth of a sovereign nation in and of itself. So we don't agree that that's good, good enough. Third, they told us about societal backlash, like Indians are going to get angry about that. First of all, when they conceded that it was, a hist it was predominantly historical reasons, and after 60 years, we know that the modern, common Indian man does not really care about what happens to Kashmir anymore. Because it was, no, because we've already seen this happen, like even, okay, on the most, uh, uh, like, of. Uh, in the most obvious of instances where you see like clashes between India and Pakistan on cricket fields and like you know the fans and all that, yeah. it, it, it's becoming less about the con uh, it's becoming less politicized, uh, politicized as compared to uh, before. And we believe that the as the generations go on, the Indian uh, the modern Indian person will not care. But even if that's not the case, we don't believe or we don't agree why the Indian man's uh, like uh, outrage is more important than the Kashmiri uh, yeah. like uh, yeah. suffering. <laughs> In, in oppression or in uh, like in fear of not having its own sovereign nation. The last, uh, no, the last reason they talk, talked about is that it's going to hurt India's legitimacy. I'm going to give you my extension to ex explain why it will not hurt India's legitimacy but rather in, uh, uh, be something that India would want to embrace. Then the second speaker came up to us and told us about how it's going to be a threat to national security because of terrorists and stuff like that. Transition comes at a cost, and we agree that there will be a power vacuum that has to be filled. But we already agree, that we already see the trend towards democracy setting place even in like the uh, in, in the 1940s in Kashmir itself, right? That's why you have no thank you. You had uh, people who keep uh, coming up with revolutions to try to in, uh, 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 make Kashmir independent, and we say that as it is no longer like it, the democracy is no longer nascent to Kas uh, Kashmir uh, anymore. The last idea on drug fights, I don't even know how it's relevant, but you can always solve it with a transnational yeah, treaty. Yeah. So we don't yeah. we don't believe it's like important in any way. Now let me move on to my arguments. Firstly, we have to explain. I'm going to explain to you why Kashmir is headed on the path towards sovereignty and autonomy. It's an increasingly defective limb on India itself, and it is a ticking time bomb that India has to like take care of, and therefore. Renouncing is the most like amicable solution that you can find. The fact that there were like three full-blown wars between India and Pakistan after 60 plus years, the fact that you have like Kashmiris insurgency all the time, uh, insurgencies acting up and uh, all the time, we have to recognize that although the situation may seem like it has simmered down between India and Pakistan, the Kashmiri people were never accounted for, not even by this bench, when they only talked to you about how India's political interests should be prioritized over yeah. anything else. Right? We don't believe that that's important, as important as, what, as uh, the Kashmiri people. We have already shown you that there's no common national identity with, 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 between the Kashmiri person and You're the Indian. Man. No, thank you. They have a low engagement rate in the political process. They have no faith in the Indian constitution. And there's increasing polarization between the in, uh, the Kashmiris who are India-oriented and in, uh, Pakistani or, uh, Pakistan-oriented. We don't believe that this is going to be solved anytime soon, soon because there's a trend towards divergence. What is Why is this so harmful? Firstly, because it increases the propensity for border clashes along the line of control and the Kashmiri nationalists will act out uh, acting up, it's a really high uh, uh, propensity. This is because of the like trend set by the Arab Spring, as well as like the previous attempts by Kashmir to claim sovereignty. Right? We uh, we all want to avoid a war, a full blown full blown war, and we see that when it is a diverging view, we cannot accept that because the situation is simmered down right now, Kashmiris will not be affected, or Kashmiris do not have any feelings in, in regard to this. Secondly. We also have to understand that a state that behaves so independently from another state should be granted sovereignty. And this is like this is why uh, 
in the past, even though they're diverging now, uh, this divergence has not been like uh, gone, uh, has not had uh, ha have any plug yet. The second uh, extension, which will cover like the, um, rebut their point, is how it sets a precedence of using magnanimity as a tool of diplomacy. Benevol benevolence has always been a large factor in assessing how mature a nation is in international relations. That's why you value international aid, and it seems as an altru altruistic act that garners more respect, right? This pins the, uh, the nation in a good light and gives them more political leverage. India should hop into this bandwagon. Why? Because it casts India in a good light then, and India is on a track to becoming a global superpower and has started be uh, behaving like a mature, rational actor with its nuclear treaties and stuff like that. Secondly, it also sets a better precedent to even solve like other conflicts like the Israel-Palestine conflict where Israel will now have an incentive after observing India to uh, uh, renounce the uh, like, uh, possession over the Gaza Strip. Other side benefits include, of course, like you know, improving in India-Pakistani ties, which are especially important. When we do a cost-benefit analysis, we only see that the cost were historical reasons and like losing of ego which can be co counted by all the benefits of having the Kashmiri people uniting them as a one sovereign state and I believe that that's the most important thing in today's debate. For this, we are very proud to propose. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you very much for that speech. We now invite the first speaker from Closing Opposition, the Member of Opposition. government to concede that Kashmir should suddenly be a sovereign state, especially when bigger countries uh, that are within the superpower, uh, which are the superpower countries, want to exploit the form of resources that comes within Kashmir, especially when Kashmir is wholly dependent on how India exploits their resources, and that's how they go on within, and that's how they go on within their economic state. We think that when you are wholly dependent on your original state in the first place, we think that for you to suddenly say that you want to be a sovereign state, it's a bit too far-fetched, especially when you know yourself that at the end of the day, when something, when, some, uh, when um, uh, assuming that a problem happens, you will probably go back to India and ask for help. We think that Kashmir should just simply, uh, India should, should not renounce their claim over Kashmir because at the end of the day, India knows well on how Kashmir can develop, especially when India has been developing Kashmir throughout, throughout within all these years. Right. So, before I move on to my extension, a couple of rebuttals. Firstly, on how Kashmir, uh, the, the people within Kashmir hasn't really, uh, doesn't really acknowledge the kind of policies that India has been imposing. Because we think, by at the end of the day, we think that Kashmir, even the people, if, if your national status has not been through, thoroughly acknowledged by the other people, we think that your cultural basis comes back forth. Because we think that at the end of the day, any kinds of problems, especially within territories, even disputes, you have to go back to all the legal forms and legal legal facts on how basis on how your country and how your state has been developed through and how it has been transferred through from disputes to disputes. I would think that only historical on only historical basis can solve these kind of problems. The kind of problem, the kind of ideas, this whole referendum on how people should self actualize is also kind of funny. First of all, when you also when you have considered to the fact that there have been ongoing conflicts within India, Kashmir, Pakistan, China, I don't know, a lot of countries have been thrown up, right? So we think that for you to suddenly say that people can suddenly self-actualize and rationalize on how which kind of which country that, that they that they would end up wanting to be in is somewhat is somewhat is somewhat irrational, especially when they cannot simply especially when you know that these people are are within conflicts in trying to know and trying to know which country that they want to go to and also on how whether they should go to India or whether they should stay here, uh, should stay in Kashmir or probably go to Pakistan. We see that there are some form of confusion, especially on the side of opening government and we think that whatever case that they have trying to propose has fallen. And 
on this idea of on how suddenly Israel will shift their focus on the Gaza Strip and also suddenly shift their focus with India, we think that it's a bit unfair and so so an extremely weird policy is suddenly saying that for you to solve a big for you to solve a problem, you suddenly so, uh, provide a bigger problem. This somewhat really funny to come from closing government who really wants to propose something new, right? We think that um, from the side of closing opposition, we think that problems within problems, especially within disputes and territories, can only be solved through historical and cultural conflicts, and we think uh, through through um, through cultural backgrounds and bases. And we think that for you, for you to not simply ign- for you to simply ignore the historical bases on how things are set, uh, how, on things on how things are settled probably sixty or one hundred years ago, we think that that is not how it it is supposed. To go. Moving on to my extension on how solution can be, can can be done through the continu- the continuity of claim over Kashmir. We see that argument happens when both sides do not want to solve this form of conflict. We see that in places such as the Bantu Kute between Malaysia and Singapore, Israel, Israel, Palestine, and also uh, redrawing the redrawing the territories be, uh, within Britain and England um, uh, through the uh, through history. We see that these kind of problems are only settled when legal standings are there and conflicts are solved based on how the passing of lands and drawing on territories on territories are always based on how history works. We see that if, if people ignore this kind of basis and this kind of facts that goes on on how history has been going on, then nothing can be solved. For you to suddenly propose something new, then meaning you are suddenly ignoring the legal basis that are ongoing before. It's like you are ignoring the law that is, that is supposed to govern you in the first place. We see that even the, even the map of countries such as Malaysia and such are 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 are, within, are already like this because of the because of the disputes and because of the because of the uh, because of the sol- the solution within conflicts within other countries and we see that this is how we solve these kind of problems. We think that the, this case set up by opposition is fine for suddenly closing closing government come to propose something new. We think that historical and cultural cultural basis is always something that you have to go back to in order for you to solve something that is really ridiculous, especially when it comes to. Um, uh, drawing the disputes, and we think that India, if if they have, if they do have the form of control within Kashmir, and if, if India is the only one who has been developing Kashmir at the end of the day, then we think that India should continue continue the claim over Kashmir. Yes, we can see that historical um, historical procedures or historical facts had already been the basis of the uh, conflict and has already brought to that loss a few times. So how does uh, your side cater to this change of new perspective where we have to put in, uh, we have to factor in the people's right to self-determine them, uh, where they where they belong versus this idea of historical conflict? Okay, that, that one just nicely moves on to my um, second extension on how peace cannot be achieved unless you actually go hardcore to it. We think that for us to be, we have to be really strict on how we need to draw this kind of territories because we see that the arguments keeps on go- going on especially when they do not want to settle on how to draw disputes and such we understand that solutions need to be achieved through peace for us to go to the fact that this argument actually exists we do understand that people who want to achieve peace but it cannot be settled through small solutions to referendums Referendums ha- that have ex- uh, that have pre existed doesn't necessarily solve everything because if these people are suddenly allowed to self determine and rationalize on their own, then probably then at, at, at the end of the day, if they not if they do not agree with the referendum, then they uh, then they will just probably go chaos and such. We think that if India if India continue continue their claim over Kashmir and really become be straight on how we see that the, our policy. Uh, on how our economy could be has developed Kashmir, on how we have we have probably put Kashmir in a better place in comparison to how you would put Kashmir, and we think that India should continue their claim over Kashmir because we think that people need to acknowledge that Kashmir has been de- dependent on India for in order for them to develop the, the economy and also the being within a country, even in, even within political ties and such. At the end of the day, if you think that if you're really dependent on a certain other country for you to simply go on, first, you cannot be sovereign, obviously. And secondly, we think that you should settle and go back to that country. And probably if you are ready to be sovereign at the end of the day, then that is a different story. That's why I back to Yeah.
Right, we thank the speaker for her speech, for the final speech on the government bench. Today we invite the government to be Mr. Speaker, let us face a truth that history is written by the victors. Right? So let, let's look at firstly what they have said, the opening houses have said, because very clearly this debate has failed to look to analyze the costs and the benefits. Because both sides they have asserted, for example, uh, in Oji's OG side, right? They, uh, OG side, they, they merely told us how uh, how this would benefit. This would be a benefit, and then they, they tell us how this would be a harm. But none of them actually gave a comparison. So now, uh, although Harvey has come out to say it, let me make your job as an adju adjudicator much more simpler in my book speech by providing you this missing uh, way of, of the cost and benefits. Okay, but firstly, let's remember that despite all these mischaracterizations, firstly that history is contentious, right? That whatever historical rights, and this was basically the entire claim, the entire argument, right? That, yeah. uh, that India has this historical claim and historical right to Kashmir. Okay, so remember that this history is written by India. Obviously, they have every incentive to make sure that it is in their vested interest. But let's say, right, even if, right, even if we, we agree with them and we concede that India has this historical right, and that's true in status quo, right? It does have this legal duty legal ownership over Kashmir. What we are saying and what this debate really is about is whether or not, given the fact that they legally own Kashmir, they should still go ahead and let Kashmir go. And we are saying that yes, because the benefits would outweigh the harms, which they have failed to point out in their way, right? Okay, so basically, three rebuttals before I move on to our substantives. Firstly, uh, okay, first of in closing speech, right, they talked about how China and okay, they give this really ridiculous example how or how Pakistan and China re really just want to exploit uh, Kashmir for their resources. We know that this is entirely impossible because the only way they can do that is remember that we're giving Kashmir sovereignty, right? We're not giving them to these superpowers. The only way they can exploit is to firstly by invading and conquering, which is ridiculous because we can really say that let's set up a military protection in the transition. But the second way can, they can do that, right, is if their companies invest and use uh, and use tactics of exploitation, then in that case, India can just give them advice on ec economic advice on how to deal with these kind of situations, right? They're, they're giving them, uh, they're giving Kashmir sovereignty. They're not completely abandoning, abandoning Kashmir yeah, yeah. to the sharks. So that's why we're saying that their, their claim on this doesn't stand, right? And secondly, sit down, right? They also have, uh, 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 they also have this like claim that oh, uh, the Kashmir people are confused. They don't, they don't really know what they want. Do they want to? Some of them want to be. Uh, belonging to India, some of them want to belong to Kashmir. Well, that's the point, right? If you have a referendum, you let them work out what they want. If if it so happens that the majority wants to stay in India, that's fine, right? They can go back to India. But right now, you have not let them make this decision. And from what we have seen in status quo, given the diverse, uh, the, the tangential cultures that eventually de developed out of this, the fact that Kashmir views itself as completely independent and different from India, the, it is very likely in if we let it go to, go through a referendum, that they will choose sovereignty, and that is what we are basing our claim on, right? Okay, and thirdly, also, that the whole this whole circular reasoning, right, that it's in, it's dependent on India, that you cannot let it go because it's dependent on you. By this logic, a parent should never let go of his child, right? Because it will always be dependent on you. But that's not true. The only reason that Kashmir has been dependent on India is because India has not has not let it go, has not chosen to let it develop, yeah, yeah. right? And that's what we are saying. If you are able to sit down, if you are able to let them, if you give them this chance to 
to develop, they will be able to develop and raise their own standards of living. And even if, even if they forever remain a crackpot of a country, which is not true, right? They are they are perfectly developed. But right? even if they are a basket case, that's Kashmir's problem. How is that India's problem, right? Okay. So, right. Let's move on to our expansions. Okay. Firstly, this is how. Okay, this is how OG came up with uh, their arguments, right? And we, we agree with that, that it is a peaceful way for us to determine the sovereignty of Kashmir. But we need to weigh against what they have said, right? That uh, it, we, we don't want to leave it up. We don't want to leave them to the wolves, to the uh, mercil merciless developed countries around them like China and Pakistan want to exploit them. So let's look at what this clash is. Because there are three main clashes in today's debate. Firstly, whether minority rights will out outweigh the majority rights, right? Whether uh, the, those minority who want to remain with India should necessarily outweigh those majority in Kashmir who want uh, uh, independent state. Okay, the second clash will be India's claim versus Kashmir's claim, right? All of their, uh, and this will sit down, and this I will talk about in, in my next part. And thirdly, the third test will be how India's claim would weigh against the uh, unrightful claims of China and Pakistan, which, which is pretty much non-existent. Okay, so firstly, the main, the main clash of today's debate, right? Where they seem somehow the whole opening opposition's case was that because India has already sunk their resources and investment into Kashmir, that is a reason to not uh, to not pull out of India. Well, as Parveen has already dealt with this, the the the, the economic loss that India would might suffer does not outweigh the rights of these people to have a sovereign nation. The autonomy of the nation will necessarily outweigh any of these economic losses. Right? Okay, sure, I'll take this. Yeah. Jammu and Kashmir is also a place of religious pil pilgrimage. It is held dear to the Hindus that hold it. Uh, that hold sure, it yeah, we're not saying close the borders. You can go and visit your, your temples or whatever, right? There's, there's no conflict of interest no. there. Yeah, but anyway, right, this is what we are saying, right? That even if India loses some money out of this deal, that they, this would necess, uh, the right of Kashmir will necessarily outweigh any of these harms. And yeah. and please look at look at what we can do. We can uh, like as Parvi has has pointed out, we can give them a loan, or we can still own some of the companies that make use of these resources. Right? We can India can still keep its claim for a limited period of time, so that it can slowly transition out without hurting too much of its economy. So all their claims on the harms is can be easily dealt with, and even if we concede that there are major harms, it is still outweighed by the benefits that will accrue. Okay, and second, secondly, how India's claim, uh, okay, and how this whole idea that, um, that India's claim is actually much more important than Kashmir's claim, right? Because if you think about it, we all agree that there were three wars fought over this, that it has been a problem. Although now, in this era of peace, there has been a cooling of tensions. It is possible for this to flare up again. And because of the fact that it is going to be a ticking time bomb, we, we do not want a recurrence on this. We do not want to leave it up to fate so that it, we may, it might lead back into a revolution. And that's why, if you look at it, you realize that it is because of the minority being oppressed Right, this and Parvin has already dealt with this. It is because of the minority that's being oppressed by a powerful majority that they will act out, as you have seen in all these revolutions. Therefore, we are saying right that the minority rights should trump the uh, sorry the majority in this case would firstly they would agree with Kashmir on uh, the decision for Kashmir to be sovereign. But even then, the the minority which is Kashmir versus India, this minority that is Kashmir is actually much more important than any of these losses or detriments that India would suffer on its own. And therefore, for all these reasons, we are proud to propose. Right, thank you very much. For the final speech of this debate, we now invite opposition. <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To finish up the debate, I'll do a storytelling session on why it's actually more important for a legal term to actually came into power to govern who has right over Kashmir. Now let's look at the debate as a whole, starting with a referendum. The referendum will ask, what is the people opinion? Now first thing first, people cannot actually self-actualize what their opinion is when they don't actually 
no, when they are in the dire state of emergency. They'll take the most easy way out when they want to do. That's what they will answer in the referendum. And I'll answer later on the, their first assumption, some of their assumption on they will choose sovereign, which I will talk about later. Now, on the referendum case, the opening government told you why do we need a referendum? Just because historical value doesn't matter, just because we're wasting resource, and just because people will decide, we need a better policy to solve this. Now, first thing first, the referendum will not solve mostly anything that they have told you about. Because we told, my extension speaker told you that historical matters, when you need to actually decide who actually owns the legal term, you need someone to come in by force and take the and bite the bullet to tell the people around you that this belongs to India. So no one disturb. If you if you actually make it declared an international way, in a legal way, then make the border certain it's India, then you cannot actually go there and fight another fourth war. That's what we wanted to say in yeah. the first place. And how do we achieve that? By deciding who actually owns Kashmir in the first place. Through research of historical development, we start a research facility, I don't know. But point is, these okay, historical so things matter. You cannot just say, oh, people in Pakistan and India has played cricket peacefully for the last two years. That means that people in Pakistan and India are not actually care about all these religious matters anymore. That's not, it's not about cricket. It's historical matter. Regardless of what happens, it's going to be something like the Lahadatu case, whereby the Zutan will lead some part of the army that actually cares about history and try to reclaim back the land. Now, deny both of you. All three of you. Now, let's say that the referendum does work. They, uh, their assumption that they gain independence. CA for them, okay, fine. But then again, the dependency will not actually solve any problem in the first place. Now, the dependency is important because if you want to be a sovereign state, you cannot actually depend on another state. Or not, it will become something like North Sudan and South Sudan, where South Sudan technically ask for, keep asking for aids and also depend on North Sudan to a certain extent. And also concede by the whip, which is, if people want to exploit, we provide army. I'm guessing India will provide the army to actually protect Kashmir in the first place. If economy problem, we ask India for advice. Again, India. The point is, they will still so, be dependent on India towards all of this matter that's going to like regionalize them. And more or less, when you actually ask, people want to export, they fought wars over this place. When you put army saying that this is an independent sovereign now, you put a small amount of army that actually has little amount of power to protect, where three major superpowers actually wants to invade and conquer that place, I don't think stationing a small group of army will actually protect it in the first place. The point is, this Kashmir life is dependent on India's sovereignty. And before I further my storytelling, yes. Even if we were to assume that India has legal title, it does not change the fact that the Kashmiri sentiments that I've explained in my speech still does not stand. Why is it then that you shouldn't prioritize the Kashmiri sentiments and let re India renounce its legal title? I'm going to go with one of the few assumptions that will... Yeah, actually, this is going to be one of the few assumptions that comes up. Okay, now, concerning history, what actually happens if history is involved? It's not just about if they can be dependent or not, but when history is involved, it's going to be like the Lahadatu case, where people will actually take the initiative to bear arms and reclaim that land in the first place. When you say about so-called people don't want to accept, Kashmiris in that place won't accept it, then you say there's a lot of countries that gain independence where people in that country more or less doesn't accept people within the majority. For instance, Malaysia within Indians and Chinese, they don't actually accept Malay rights, but they want independence either way. Or even Sabah and Sarawak, whereby they gain independence because of going through Malaysia and they gain the state of state as it is. Their explanation of saying that because they can become a state on their own, they should be independent does not mean Sabah and Sarawak should be independent. And because of so-called cultural reason as it is, does not mean Kelantan would need to be independent. There's a reason why those kind of countries, uh, states in Malaysia, does not become independent because we correlate and depend on each other in the first place. That's how it works. And this kind of correlate and dependency is still exists in Kashmir, which is by also historical, culture, and also by their logic, the army, the investment and economy, the resource, and so on. So, these kind of things are the ones that actually make India really right. If Kashmir actually have their sovereign or go anywhere, then they will still need to depend on India. Whereby, by their logic also, 
It's Kashmir's so, problem, not India. That's why India still has a bit sentimental heart to go and protect Kashmir either way when they're sobbing. Why can't they actually just claim Kashmir and protect it either way under their name rather than it's a sovereign but we feel pity because there's historical value there, we want to protect it either way. Now, opening. You have to engage with the idea that the, the decision of India to award the right to self-determine to Kashmir actually outweighs the cost that India accrues if they continuously engage in this deadlock. Uh, I'm getting lazy to repeat my story from the start, so try to rethink back on how I say that people in Kashmir have their own say in it, people in India have their own say in it. Now, now India has their own interests. Let me continue with the story. India has their own interests, whereby they don't care as much of what people in the international standard see. They want to protect their right in Kashmir on whatever happens. That's where they put more investment in it, they show how important Kashmir is to their nation. When, that's when opening, uh, closing opposition say that you need a legal way to show Pakistan, to show China, or to show any other country that Kashmir as it is, is part of India. Make sure it is part of their border. You do not need to renounce it and claim it sovereign so that there's a lot of possibility that problem may come up with, even within their assumption, then India needs to actually come in and save Kashmir yet again, even after their so-called independence. That's not the way how it works. When you want to gain dependency, just make sure that you can actually not rely on the state that you are independent from. We even concede that this will be a ticking time bomb. But then again, when you think back, if they're going to become a sovereign, if the time bomb actually explodes, who's the one that's going to come in and save? We, that's why we say that India should actually have the word in what will happen to Kashmir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. That ends the prelims.